it is just broke that Sam Hartman is committed to Notre Dame. So Sam Hartman made it official. He will be Notre Dame's next quarterback. So I got to publish this stuff, Vince, and get it going. So why don't you go ahead and just kind of give your initial thoughts on Sam Hartman to Notre Dame? Can I just say thank you? Because uh, it has – it's been a day, and I'm glad that you finally put it out there. So why don't you give me Baxter on why our show started at 2.30 <laughs> <laughs> and why we've been kind of okay. dragging this offensive that. conversation. It's like, guys, get oh. to the point you keep – this is why it's like it was supposed okay just please go okay because i gotta so, get this story tweeted out i get a phone call around noon uh from brian and you know i'm getting ready for the show and i'm getting in the shower and the whole thing and he's like hey we're gonna push the show back you know i expect a, an announcement from sam hartman about 1 30 awesome right. so that that's fantastic so we go about our lives we're doing different things i get another phone call from brian at about 10 minutes to two he still hasn't announced <laughs> right he's like i got a shower i gotta get the shower i gotta make this right. happen so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna wait blah 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 blah. so about 2 15 we're like hey we're gonna go live we're gonna start talking because this was our topic that we planned on having all along right and so like hey we'll get into it and then if he ever announces we'll just make it happen and we'll talk about it and we'll just go right. from there and we're talking and we're talking and we're talking well and then i was waiting. told during the show that it would be 3 30 <laughs> and i'm like you gotta be kidding me and so, then here we are at 3 45 yeah, and it's right. like I'm hitting refresh nonstop. Yes. You know, too. it's just like, come on, man. And I'm thinking to myself, I think the first thing that I am going to do uh, is I'm going to send a gift to Sam Hartman and it's a watch because uh, that would be fantastic. No, I'm just. Yeah. I'm just although that'd around, be a but... little hypocritical for me to do. Consider. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. I can't do that. Oh, no, I'm so. just joking. But no, I. Yeah. hey, it is finally official. Obviously, he was on campus today. You know, if you were a member of the message board, you knew that that was going to be the case. Uh, there are some great pictures on his uh, his Twitter page of him in the number 10 jersey with the football, smiling ear to ear, uh, and it just says onward. So yeah. it's exciting. He is officially a part of the Notre Dame roster, which is fantastic. And now we can actually talk about what this roster looks like moving forward now that right. Sam Hartman is a part of it. Well, I think what we're going to do is we'll probably call an audible and we'll no, we won't call an audible. We're going to break down Sam Hartman over the next couple days. But I think sure. right now what we'll talk about is I, I want to address this point, Vince, because um, when I, when I look at it, Vince, it's, it's one of these things is here's, here's kind of what I've, gathered behind the scenes so let's yeah. talk about how this whole thing played out yes let's do that the biggest surprise to me was how many portal quarterbacks reached out to notre dame including sam hartman so for all these people talking about how notre dame tampered with this that and the other thing no they didn't <laughs> there are avenues to, <laughs> to have communication right and it, <clears throat> i was told that it was actually that side that reached out to notre dame including several other pretty big name quarterbacks that never jumped in the portal reached out to Notre Dame. And there was a thought of, Hey, if you jump in, we'll, we'll be interested in you. Um, but beyond that, there, there, you can't really say a whole lot. Right. So when I was first told about Sam Hartman, I was not thrilled to be completely honest with you, Vince, because I hate that offense. And I had a oh. very kind of low opinion of Sam Hartman because I, I hate that do. offense. I know you do. And, and so, <laughs> You know, I, I was like, let me dive into the film. And, and the more I watched it, I even told somebody, I was like, please, please don't let it be Sam Hartman. Because there was a couple other guys, I won't say the names, because those guys didn't jump in the portal and, and decided to stay, that that were like, hey, this guy has sent out some inquiries and, and Notre Dame's a place he may be interested in, that kind of thing. And so I, Sam Hartman was not at the top of my list. I can just assure you that. But then I was like, but I'll be fair and I'll be open. And so I started watching the film and you're like, I just get that mesh and I just get disgusted with that mesh. And then you start seeing things like, okay, well, on these play action passes where he drops back, he looks pretty clean with his <clears> mechanics. <throat> and then you say, boy, they were really good on offense the last couple of years. I think they were like seventh in 2021. I think they were, I think last I checked, they were like 16th, I believe. Um, you know, most recent, I think this year, although obviously bowl games play out. So let me see what their third down. Uh, success weight. They dropped to 18th this year, 46.2. Uh, they were seventh last, sixth last year in in uh, in third down last year. And then you start to say, okay, well, let me watch some of his third down film. 
And then you start watching the third down film, and you're like, they do a lot more drop back on third down, and he has money mm-hmm. on third down. So then you start to see, okay, on drop backs, he's actually <clears throat> really good dropping back and throwing the football. And, and man, his numbers in that era are really good. And then you start to study the film. You're like, this kid is a, throws a really clean ball. It, when, when you just kind of look at pure dropbacks, boy, his, his accuracy in those situations is much better than it is when he's doing that mesh stuff because he gets, he's so any, he, that's where the other thing, the other thing that concerned me too, Vince, is he turns the ball over a lot. I mean, those a lot of interceptions. A lot, the of ball interceptions, a lot, but like, a lot of interceptions. Like 26 interceptions 26. in the last two years. Yeah, 26. And then you start breaking down the film and like some of it is just the, the offense. Some of it is he's getting hit as he's throwing because he takes a lot of hits when he throws the football. And then you start looking at it and you're like, you know, some of that stuff is just going to be because he's a real confident kid and thinks he can fit the ball in some tight windows. You just got to live with that, right? I mean, you're going to live with that if Tyler Buckner's your quarterback. You know, but then you just kind of look at it and you say, boy, man, you, you see some of this stuff. Like, so you look at his his numbers this year, for example, uh, his completion percentage without any play action was 63.3% on on drop back quarterback, on drop backs, right? Well, that, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good number. And then you look at like, you know, screen game, he's very high percentage in the screen game. But, you know, he's a kid that, you know, is is going to have – the ability to kind of go out there and, and drop back and run the Rams offense. And then you say, okay, what's been lacking from the offense in recent years? They don't throw the deep ball very much or, or very well. Sam Hartman's numbers throwing the deep ball last year are outstanding. Mm-hmm. So here's the deal. In, in First of all, no quarterback in college football the last two years combined has completed more passes beyond 20 yards or more passes be, beyond 10 yards. If you look at just this past season alone, Sam Hartman completed 41 deep balls, which was third in the nation. And he completed 73 balls between 10 and 19, which I believe ranked him sec tied for second in the nation. He threw for 100. He completed 114 passes from 10 and beyond. Only one other quarterback in college football had more, and that was Drake May with three more than he had. And Drake May played one more game. That, actually, no, Drake May played two more games than Sam Hartman because they played 14, Wake Forest played 13, but Sam missed the first game of the year with that heart problem. So he only played 12 games. Uh, Sam Hartman also threw 30 touchdown passes beyond 10 yards that traveled 10 yards past the line of scrimmage in the air. And the only quarterback to tie with him was a kid, uh, Austin Reed, from Western Kentucky. Drake May threw 28. He was next. By comparison's sake, Sam Hartman completed 10 passes completed 114 passes this year in 12 games that traveled past 10 yards past line scrimmage. And he threw 30 touchdown passes that traveled beyond 10 yards past line scrimmage last year during his Heisman trophy season, Bryce young in 15 games completed 104 passes that went past 10 yards past line scrimmage. And he threw 23 touchdown passes that went past 10 yards beyond the line scrimmage. So, you look at events. This is a guy that can attack all the zones that we've said Notre Dame's offense has struggled to consistently attack. And this guy doesn't have like a bazooka for an arm. Right. But when you study the film, Vince, and you see him in drop backs, this guy throws a really nice deep ball. And as I said, his 41 deep ball completions this season was third in the country. I'm looking at the numbers here this year. <clears throat> he was third in the nation in, in, in deep ball completions with 41. And he was uh, uh, third in deep ball touchdowns with 16. That's 20 or more yards past the line of scrimmage. Which means doesn't mean it's a, a touchdown of beyond 20 yards. It means the pass was thrown beyond 20 yards past the line of scrimmage. Okay, so it was completed 20 yards past the line of scrimmage. Last year, when he played a full season, he was second in the nation in deep ball completions with 45, and he was. Um, And he was, and he had, he was first in the nation in deep ball touchdowns. Okay. With 20. So you're adding something to the mix that you just haven't had in recent seasons. That's the reality of it. And so to me, that's one of the reasons that this staff is going after Sam Hartman, right? Is because they want a guy that can attack down the field. That's one of the things they like about Tyler Buckner, as we saw in the bowl game is he's going to bring more ability to really attack the the tougher parts of the field than yeah. we've seen this offense have. And, and the scary thing is, is if you can do that, I mean, the run game's there, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's the thing. The run game is there. The question is, can you hurt teams in other ways? And, you know, 
that's that's one thing you're you're hoping to have. And and so the reality is is that's what I mean. That's one of the big things about Sam Hartman. I'll get into a little bit more of the particulars, but I think that's one of the things that you look at and say, why was Sam Hartman the guy that this staff kind of zeroed in on? It's it's the experience. Mm -hmm. This is a kid that right now, Vince, ranks 19th in college football history in passing Mm -hmm. yards, right? And if he throws for 3,000 yards this year um, for Notre Dame, right, if if he wins a starting job and if if he throws for uh, uh, at least 3,000 yards this year, which is like less than what Jack Cohn threw for. That's not out of the realm of possibility. He moves all the way up to number four all time (laughs) in passing yards. You know, so so I mean, he, he's a guy. Kind of love right. the COVID year, baby. Well, but see, you say that, but like he he <clears throat> he didn't start. He didn't start. Um, his right. COVID year was 2020. He started nine games as a true freshman. He started. Mm-hmm. He started only one game the next year. He started, I think, uh, like nine games the year next year after that. The COVID year. He only started nine games the COVID year. Uh, and and so you look at it and you say, you know, this is a guy that's produced. He started 45. He has 45 career starts, right? Which is like three seasons worth, right? I mean, a little over three seasons worth. But yeah, the COVID, but even, but my point is, even if you don't just look at where he is now, sure. all time leader in touchdown passes in the ACC. No, absolutely. Second all time in passing yards in the ACC. And he only was a full time starter for two full years. So now the reality is some of the production is going to, and Oh, and by the way, he is, what did I say? He threw 110 touchdown passes that currently ranks 18th all time in college football history. So it's a guy that produced, this is yeah. a guy that knows how to run him offense. This is a guy that, you know, can go out there and do those things. But let me get a backstory on the, on how this went down. So two things were, were clear in all of the conversations that Notre Dame had with portal quarterbacks. And this is something I've been told Vince from day one. Yep. Day one. Everybody and needs to listen to this. The reason that I have not been talking about this, because I was told I'm going to tell you some of this stuff, but if, if it gets out there, like we're done. Right. So that's why I didn't talk a lot about this quarterback stuff from day one. I was told two things are very clear. Number one, this, we, any quarterback that comes to us about NIL guarantees that we need to give him money to come. We don't want like, we don't want a guy that's looking for a payday. We want a guy that's coming for two things. Number one, he wants to compete for a championship. And number two, we're totally cool with him being someone who is is willing to view it as I want to better myself for the next level. There's nothing wrong with that. I have no problem with that. Right? As long as it's coming here for a championship. But if you're looking for a payout or a payday, that's not what we're looking for. Now, you'll get money as an NIL guy, as a quarterback at Notre Dame, if you win the job. But we're not paying you to come here. That's number one. Okay? Number two. They this every quarterback was told you are not being promised the job. We would not be recruiting if we didn't think you could come be a really good quarterback here. But we're not handing you the job. We've got a number another kid, number 12, that is really talented. Yep. And the thing that Notre Dame has said to people from the beginning is if Tyler Buckner doesn't get hurt in game two, they're not looking for a portal quarterback. Agreed. And so this guy needs to know that whoever it is. You're not being promised something. You've got to bet on yourself a little bit too, that you're going to go out and beat this guy out. And the the when Jack Cohn was told the same thing, but Jack Cohn's situation was different because Jack's like, I got to beat out a true freshman Tyler Buckner and yeah. a true sophomore Drew Pine. I feel good about that one. Well, and Jack would have come anyway. But this is one where, and when Tyler went and did what he did the bowl game, there was no wavering. There was no wavering at all because this is kid is a competitor. Correct. And and that's um, you know that's. That's what you want to see. He was not promised a job. Now, does he is he coming in expecting to start? Of course he is. Why would he not? But he was told he will be competing for this job in the spring. And I can assure you that Marcus Freeman and Tommy Reese are going to – this has been a conversation that has happened with, from what I understand, with Tyler Buckner and with every transfer kid that's reached out to Notre Dame is, yes, you'll, you're going to come in here with certain advantages over Tyler. But – the best man, the, the guy that gives us the best chance to win games in 2020 is going to start. I, yep. I don't care if it means we screw ourselves over and we ne- never get another transfer quarterback because of, of this kid coming in and not starting. If so be it, so be it. But here's what I've been told. Notre Dame has said, we believe with a couple little tweaks to our roster, including better quarterback play, 
that we can be a championship football team in 2023, flat out. So people have asked, why wouldn't you just start Tyler, let him develop and make a run at 2024? Because they think this 2023 team, when you look at the landscape of college football and how their schedule sets up with Ohio State and USC at home and a depleted Clemson team, a de- or not depleted, a descending Clemson team in 2020 uh, on the road, they think this team is capable of making a run. They know that they've got a couple little tweaks that they got to make. Sure. Right. One of them being quarterback play has to be better. And so the way the Notre Dame staff views this is their quarterback play is going to be excellent next year because one of two things is going to happen. One is Sam Hartman wins a job, and they got a lot of confidence in him. So in 38, um, 70, was it 76 touchdowns, 77 touchdowns the last two years? 39 like and 38. That. Yeah, think, it was right? a lot. It was in the 30s, high 30s. Correct. And so you've got him who's going to be really good. Or Tyler Buckner beats him out, which means Tyler Buckner is now finally tapped in his full potential. Exactly. Either way, I'm good. You're going to have really good quarterback play next year. Yeah, that's why this was this move was made. That's why he was the guy there. I was told Keaton Slovis expressed interest. No, thank you. Right, that, <laughs> I'm sure he they did. were if they were going to bring in a guy that could compete with Tyler or not, they weren't looking to bring in a depth guy. They weren't going to compete. But every single quarterback was told, and I've been told this multiple times by people that I trust, and I challenged them on it. No, you didn't. You didn't say that to them. Yeah, we did. Every single kid was told you got to you got to earn the job, and from what I was told, Sam Hartman never flinched once in those conversations. Awesome. Never once, never once did he flinch. Now he's got to be smart enough to think, okay, can I win this job? And he thinks that he can, as he should. He's not coming here to sit. He the wasn't bench. promised. Like, that's exactly. Not, that, but and, he and, wasn't promised. Right. And cr- people go Vince on. That, yeah, I was to say people point. are absolutely right when you say he's not coming here to sit the bench. No, he's not coming here to sit the bench. But he's also not coming here with the promise of being the starter. There's a big difference there. He is a very confident kid who has a track record of winning. And you can go back to everything Brian just said about his stats and all of that. And it's all true. And I'm ecstatic that he's going to be a part of this roster. But he wasn't guaranteed a starting position. And just like when a five-star quarterback comes in as a freshman or commits to a school back to back to back of another five star and another five star. Those guys are confident that they're going to win the starting job and that they're going to play. Those guys aren't signing on to sit the bench. Sam Hartman is not signing on to sit the bench. Right. Signing on because he sees the potential of Notre Dame's team. He knows that a successful Notre Dame team with him at the helm is going to raise his stock. Yes. Number one. Go lead Notre Dame to a national right. championship and see what happens okay. to your stock. It's number cool. one from a draft potential because he's going to be running an NFL offense. We've talked about that a bajillion times right. about how this offense prepares you for the next level. If Ian Book can get drafted in the fourth round, okay, Sam Hartman will get drafted higher if he leads this team in to any kind of success. Okay, if he's the starting quarterback, he sees that. He also sees that his draft grade right now, mainly because of the offense that he was running, was his size. Was was third day. Was third day. His size. Okay. Right. Right. Was third day. He can make more money in NIL at Notre Dame than he can being a third day draft pick in the NFL. This Potentially, year. yeah. Like this, and then if you, he's year, able to jump saying. his his draft stock up even more, next then it year, even yeah. gets more so. So right. the boxes that are checked by Sam Hartman coming to Notre Dame are right. easy to see from his camp. Right, easy to see. He's going to come and compete for this job. People also need to understand that it was not promised to him. He's going right. to compete for it, but he thinks he can win. And it. that's what that's I like. awesome. That's great. That's what I like. He, yes, he's willing to compete. You want that now? And here's the other First flip side of this. I've heard people say, well, this means Tyler Buckner is going to transfer. I don't know if Tyler Buckner is going to transfer or not. I, I, I can't, I'm not a fortune teller. But my understanding is Notre Dame has been very upfront with the quarterbacks from day one, which is why Drew Pine transferred. I mean, right. when Drew Pine yes. left on, was it December, or was it second third, or third second or whatever? Or third. Yeah. Right? Part of the reason was because Notre Dame said, we're going in the portal to get a quarterback. You know right. who else they told that to? Tyler Buckner. Correct. Right? But what they told Tyler is, you're going to get a chance to compete. And they told Drew, you're going to get a chance to compete. Tyler said, okay, cool. Now, could Tyler end up changing his mind if he's not going to start? Maybe. But looking at it from Tyler's standpoint, I hope he stays because, number one, you're going to get a chance to compete. And if you win the job, what's that say about you? But number two, because you only played three games this year, he got a redshirt back. He still has three years of eligibility left. Yep. 
I don't think sitting behind Sam Hartman is going to be a bad thing for Tyler Buckner. If any, because clean up your mechanics, you're, he's still going to play. Oh, yeah. You know, yes. and, and so, you know, for me, there's all, there's all those aspects to it, Vince, that, that there's a, there's a lot of reasons for Tyler Buckner to stay, especially if you like it at Notre Dame. And from right. what I understand, he does. Right. Uh, I could understand the temptation to leave. Me too. Especially but there's no guarantee. Number one, there's no guarantee you're going to be able to go somewhere and start anywhere else. And you're, you're already now two and a half years in. So you're close. You're getting closer to your degree. Why not stick it out? Mm-hmm. Because my understanding of talking to people around the Notre Dame program is, is that, their hope is that Tyler stays, mm-hmm. proves he can stay healthy for a full year. Sam comes in and does his thing. If Sam wins the job, Tyler continues to develop his game and then takes over in 24 and he's got two years as a starter. Right. And, 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 but if Tyler beats him out, then he beats him out. And that just means Tyler's ready to go ball. So the, the point, however, is the competition is going to lead to a greater, we always talk about margins for error, right, Vince? The margin for error at quarterback just got enormously bigger. Because it's assuming Tyler stays because you've got now Tyler Buckner and Sam. Yes. Hartman. Yes. So they're going to make each other better. Absolutely. And, and so, yeah, I, I'm with you. If that job yeah. is going to be ready to thrive. Absolutely. And the, and the, whoever doesn't win that job is going to be ready to thrive too. I, everybody realizes that just, and, and this is a, an extreme example, but everybody realizes, right. That Max Duggan was not the starter going into the year for TCU. Right. right? I mean, right. he was the backup. He got beat out, and now he's leading his team to a national championship. I realize that's an extreme example, but the point is, you need to have you need to have two guys that you know can run this offense. Right. If you want to be, I mean, do you, will you need it? Probably, maybe yeah. not, but probably. probably. <laughs> I mean, that's that's just the reality of right. it, right? And so, Notre Dame in a perfect world, whoever wins the job. They have both of these guys on the roster, and you're ready to roll. Right. So this th- there's nothing negative about this right. in any way. And the fact that Tyler Buckner needs to compete for the job, the fact that Sam needs to compete for the job, is going to make both of them right. better quarterbacks. Well, and, and the thing is, is if Tyler doesn't want to stay, I understand it, but that kind of tells you something too, right? I mean, Absolutely. Drew Pine not staying kind of told me a little something. Well, it it told me a lot. You know, uh, Tyler Buckner, if he decides to leave after this year, it tells me something. Mm -hmm. It tells me the exact opposite story of of why Sam came. Because he he knew he had to compete and made the best man win. And this is his last chance. Tyler has three years left. So I hope Tyler stays because I, like Vince, you know, I've never, I've never wavered from the, if he can be healthy, Tyler Buckner is going to be really good camp. I've never wavered from that. I'm there too. And I still believe that If, if he can stay healthy, but you can't. You can't go into next season with him and Steve Angeli and Kenny Minchie and you're crossing your fingers saying, boy, I hope Tyler can stay healthy again this year. All right. Because that's what you did this year. They gambled, turned down some quarterbacks that reached out to them. I told Keaton, I was told Keaton Slovis was really wanted to come to Notre Dame. Notre Dame said no. Because they wanted, they thought they didn't think they thought Tyler needed and Drew needed the reps to compete in battle, mm-hmm. and so and and Tyler wins the job. There's a lot of excitement about him. He played okay against Ohio State, not good against Marshall, and then gets hurt, and the development is lost, gone, and that's the key. Right. So I can assure you, the Notre Dame staff is incredibly high on Tyler's talent, and that's why I said to you before, I can say with confidence that Notre Dame would have gone to the transfer portal no matter what this off season, but they would have done it like last year where they were looking more for a depth guy. Right. Not a starter. Like an Ivy league guy. Right. Cause or... I think Drew still leaves after this year. Oh, I he's, he's, he's fully anticipated right. Cause that Tyler, be if case. Tyler was a starter the whole year, I think Drew still leaves. Yeah. We've talked no, about agree. that before the season, yes, get his degree and then go do what you got to do. Right. Right. But for me, like they would have gone to the portal for a depth guy. If Tyler doesn't get hurt, they wouldn't have gone to the portal for a Sam Hartman. Right. Uh, and, and if Sam Hartman would have wanted to come after Tyler started the whole year, it's like, dude, you, you know, we've got a quarterback, right? Like you can come, but you're going to have to be pretty freaking good to beat this kid out. That's how, right. the, that's how the thought is. Cause Marcus Freeman and Tommy Reese, both, I can, I can tell y'all with a great deal of confidence, they both love Tyler's potential. 
but getting another season in the injury kind of forced them rough. into this, yeah. right? Because now Tyler's got to go prove, <laughs> not that he's a good player. He, they already know that. He's got to prove you can stay healthy. You know, like it, it's just like, missed his sophomore year with a knee injury, missed his senior year with COVID, not his fault. Missed a game last year with an ankle injury. The game he comes off the bench against Virginia Tech and looks so good, Vince, the reason Jack Cohn came off the bench at the end was because they brought him in to rally the troops. Tyler got hurt. He hurt right. his ankle. Right. Couldn't play. And so, you know, and then, of course, this year. So that's the thing for me is I hope Tyler stays and learn. First, compete. Mm -hmm. Beat him out. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you don't, what can you learn from him? Because I think Sam Hartman's the ideal quarterback for that's Tyler Buckner call. to learn behind. That's a good call. Because Sam Hartman is a mobile quarterback. That's He's not a runner. He's a mobile quarterback. Right. The, the guy's rushed for 17 touchdowns in his career. I think he can help develop the, the pocket part of what Tyler Buckner can do. Sure. Because if the pocket part of what Tyler Buckner can do improves, this kid's going to be unreal. Because we saw in the Gator Bowl, this kid can make some insane plays. It's the little things that Tyler's not good at yet. Yeah, it's absolutely. The drop back, hit your drop, and hit a freaking wheel route to the running back. Don't throw it at his feet. You know or, what I mean? Or right at his face mask at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> right. You know, and that, right. some of that was nerves, but still, your point is sure. your point is sure still valid. We I saw mean, that in the in the game against Marshall. I mean, yeah. he can hit a post route for a touchdown when a dude's drilling him in the freaking face. <laughs> right. But when Braden Lindsay's running wide open and he has no pressure, he sails it by eight yards. You know what right. I mean? Like. It's right. those things that Tyler still needs to learn. The talent's there. He's a really smart kid. Right. It's just the experience mm -hmm. of playing football. And it's not just game experience. Like, here's, here's the thing. Tyler didn't miss game experience. He missed practice experience with all those injuries. All of it. Because he hurt his knee. It wasn't like as a sophomore in high school, he was backing up some veteran and so he was practicing every day. And he was hurt. He couldn't practice. He couldn't develop. Right. Senior year, same thing. Um, freshman year at Notre Dame, he got a lot of development because he could play. This year, he lost all the development time. And I think those are the things that you look at and say, well, you know, that's why there's so much optimism in Tyler because he's a really talented player. But you also can't fault Notre Dame for saying, no, we can't, we think we have a team that can go compete for a title next year. We need a couple pieces here and there. We, we really trying to get an impact D lineman, right? Want to get some veteran experience at, at, at pass catchers. And some depth at safety. But other than that, we're really like people say, why aren't they looking at more Vipers? Because they love Jordan Patel, Josh Burnham, Aiden Gobira, Junior Tuella Maka, those guys. They love all of them. And 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 then you look at, you know, why aren't why aren't they recruiting this position? Because they like where they're at there. Right. Right. That's why they, they do such a good job recruiting. Right. And they, I mean, it's college. You, right. you eventually you have to be able to develop your guys and allow them to fill the holes and not have to go to the transfer portal to fill those right. holes. I right. mean, that's... so they think they can compete for a championship and you owe it to the rest. Like somebody said, why don't you just let Buckner play again next year? Maybe go nine and four. And I'm like, that's, that would be maybe the best thing for Tyler Buckner, but that's not the best thing for the for other 84 game. kids on scholarship. Yeah. yeah. Who some of them, this is their only chance to compete for a championship in 2020 or their last chance. I should say to compete for a championship in 2023. How's that fair to them? Right. Now, if Tyler Buckner wins the job, then great. But if Tyler Buckner beats out Sam Hartman, it's because Tyler Buckner's ready to lead you to a championship. Right. That, that's the reality. And that's it. still a win-win scenario. Correct. Like, literally, win. You're going to win Correct. a lot of games with whoever wins Correct. this battle. Correct. That's the way Correct. I see it. it it's a win-win. It's right. a, It really is a win-win. And, and you know, the thing, too, is Sam Hartman is, it fits in really well personality, not personality-wise, but, like, the way he plays the game. Because – the one thing about this kid, I watched this kid as like a 175-pound freshman. I actually saw Sam Hartman play live as a freshman against Notre Dame. It was mm -hmm. Ian Book's, I think, first career start. First. No, first career official. Like, right, it was his first start, start as the starter. He, correct. Like right. the I North mean, Carolina game the year before, I don't count. He was filling right. in for an It was an injury exactly. start, non-injury right. start. Right? right, right, right. It was against Sam Hartman. Right. This kid was like a buck 75, a buck 80. And the Notre Dame defense was punishing him. He eventually got knocked out, but like that kid, that kid kept getting up and kept battling. <laughs> and you're like, this kid's gonna get killed. Yeah. Like, but he kept getting off the map. And if you watch him his first few years, like he got thrust into the lineup way too early. Yeah. He just physically wasn't ready. Right. But he competed. Right. That was the thing. He competed and he can battle. And and I and I think this 
the number of quarter like if I, I wish I could tell you all the names of the quarterbacks that I heard reached out to Notre Dame. I wish I could. You can tell me later because you guys would be. I know. Yeah, no. Uh, you guys <laughs> would be I like, why are all these quarterbacks looking at Notre Dame? Because the perception of Tommy Reese's pass offense is a lot different in football circles than it is it in <laughs> Notre Dame fan circles. Right. It that's just a fact. Now you could argue with, well, okay, why is that? Sure. I mean, that's fair, right? That's but I'm saying schematically, right? People look at what he does and they they really like it. So, you know, that's kind of that's kind of where you see it. So, I think you know they need a level of toughness here. Absolutely, and, yeah, sure. And that brings it. Tyler brings it. Drew brought yes, it. Absolutely. Look, I'll be critical of certain aspects of Drew Pine's game, but there's certain things I'm going to praise him for too. And the one thing I'm going to praise Drew Pine for, that's a little dude. Mm-hmm. And he's not exactly like a you know rocked up physique, you know what I'm saying, Vince? <laughs> we heard about that too. <laughs> but you know what? Up jersey, the spare he took tire. a beating, and he kept battling. Yeah, and and, and t- Tyler's that way, right? And I mean, there's a lot of quarterbacks, Vince, that were highly ranked recruits that they don't even try to play in that bowl game, right? Like, dude, I'm, I need to recover. I need to make sure I'm healthy. And as soon as Tyler was cleared, he was like, "I'm playing." Yeah, absolutely. I love that. <laughs> you know, and he took some shots. And he that. did not he did not change how he plays at all. He no. slid a couple times or dipped out of bounds a couple times. That's it. Okay. But he but was that's like not what he should do. I have no problem. Exactly. With that. But what, what I'm saying do. is yeah. he didn't change the way he played no. at all. No. He's like, hey, if I gotta take this shot to get this ball out, then I gotta get this ball out. And that says a lot about the kid. So I'm excited. The reason I'm excited about this is number one, as I've done more film homework on Sam Hartman, I really like the fit at Notre Dame. Sure. A lot better than I thought I would. I'm just being honest. I was not high on this. I even said there was a guy on Facebook one time that was talking about Sam Hartman like a couple month or a little while ago and gave like four reasons why. And I responded with like, number one, system quarterback. Number two, system quarterback. Number three, sy- I'll admit that. I'll own that, right? Because that's what he was to me. But as you dive into the film, you see a kid that that really brings some stuff to the table, Vince. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm pumped. Yeah. I, it, it, again, but my yeah. point was the reason I'm excited, Vince, is because I've really come to like this kid a lot. Sure. But but the him coming in to me greatly enhances the chances you're going to have a big time quarterback next year because it's either going to be him exactly. That's what and, in order because here's the, if it's him, he has to beat out Tyler Buckner right to win the job. That's not going to be an easy thing to do. Exactly. Number two, if. It's Tyler. It means Tyler has to beat Sam out. So however that battle goes, as long yep. as they both battle, I mean, I feel like, okay, you just ensured that you're going to have a really, yes. really good quarterback. Yes. For the first year. time in a while, I have felt really good about the quarterback position at Notre Dame. From, you know, yeah. and that that is not only whoever's going to start, but whoever is the backup too. Because you're not going into games like, oh, my God, he can't get hurt. He can't get hurt. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if he gets hurt, our season is garbage. Like, I'm not – that is not my thought process. My thought right. process is they're good to go no matter who it's going to be, whether it's one, whether it's two, and whoever those one and two are, I feel good about where Notre Dame is. You're right. The, the margin of error is, like, huge right now. Right. It's huge because there's so much margin right now right. for the way that I know that both of these guys can play right. moving forward. And on top of that, at the pieces that are around them on the offense, yeah, you know, running yeah. back room, the offensive line, the tight end room, the way the wide receivers are getting better with every snap and the new guys that are coming in, Caleb Smith, that's coming in from Virginia tech, like all of the pieces right. on the offense, I'm feeling really good about right now. Now it all has to come together, obviously. But what did I'm Caleb so Smith do? What did Caleb Smith do well? What's about the only thing he did at Virginia Tech? Run down the field deep. And like, <laughs> what's Tobias Merriweather going to be good at? What's Deion Coles going to be good at? This is the kind of quarterback that can make those plays. I think Tyler is too, right? But this is kind of what we're adding on to is that you're bringing in these guys that can, can do those things. And that's kind of what gets you fired up. Vince. So, you know, this is – it's like <laughs> going through the whole thing. You're like, dude, this guy needs to make this announcement because I'm running out of stuff to say <laughs> about the offense and about quarterback and stuff like that. So <laughs> I, I was like, that's what's like, Vince, can you please add to this? I was like, uh, I don't because Vince said like, everything. I don't know what else. I don't know what else. I don't know. Stop freaking agreeing. Make up an argument if you need to. I need time. <laughs> he hasn't committed yet. We need time. God. 
Um, That's so yeah, me. Uh, uh, big day for Notre Dame, right? Now they're not done in the portal, Vince. I mean, there, there's a lot of dudes. They're oh, gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, gonna, gonna make a run at. News. Um, we had some it, some intel drop last night about some guys that are on the board from Notre Dame. There's a couple guys whose names I couldn't share that are you know some of them could be guys that could be difference makers, some just depth guys. But yeah, there's some there's they're 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 not done yet, right? I mean, this is this is the I think the first skill player that they've added, right? The others were kickers and punters and stuff. I think the other two transfer oh, guys from, were well, Caleb Smith. Caleb Smith, that's right. Skill, skill guy, um, but other than that, but yeah, I yeah, uh, it just you know this this is good, right? It, what's funny for me is I even had somebody says, well, the competition's going to be a lot different at Notre Dame than it is Wake Forest. I'm like, dude, half the schedule is going to be exactly what he was exactly playing at same. Wake Forest. What are Notre you talking about? An ACC schedule. Like, half their schedule is a freaking ACC conference. What are you talking about? You know, but I mean, that's just it's, that's it's, awesome. That's awesome. And, and I will thing. also I will also say there's some people like you know he's Ian Book 2.0 and he's this and he's that. It's like, is 2.0 mean that's better? I, it means he's the same guy, basically. Okay. I mean, he's not the same guy. He's not. You put no. Ian Book on Wake Forest. They're team, very different players. He is not the ACC leader in touchdowns <clears throat> for his career. No. Plain and simple. Okay. No. So everybody needs to take a step back right. on that one. No, I mean they're they're very different players. Like Sam is Sam is mobile. He's not the athlete or the runner that Ian was. Sure. Um, you know, he uh there's just there. Ian had really nice velocity on like 15 and under stuff, but he just, he was not a much of a gunslinger. Like Ian was a very low, like high percentage passer, meaning he was not going to take many chances as a quarterback. This kid takes a ton of chances, meaning sometimes you're like, Hey man, we'll need you to make that throw (laughs) right on third and 12, make that throw on first and 10. We'll need you to make that throw, take the check down. There's going to be an element of that there. The other thing too is, is like, he's going to, here's the thing that's going to be unique for Sam Hartman is we talked a lot about the Notre Dame defense at the beginning of the show. Right. And it's one of those things where it's not as good as it needs to be, but it's going to be much better than what he's had at Wake Forest. Correct. And so you don't need to go out there. You're not going to get in a whole lot of 51 to 45 shootouts with Clemson, you know, with this defense. Right. Uh, You're not going to go, you're not going to have to get into 59 to 58, 55 shootouts against North Carolina. Right. And, and so those are the things you look at and say, there's going to be a lot less pressure on him to have to go out there and score 40 every game to win because he's got a better team around him. You know, much better run game than what he dealt with at Wake Forest, that he had at Wake Forest the last couple of years. Now, he's had good receivers. A.T. Perry's a good football player. He's had really good receivers to throw to in recent years. But the rest of the, of the package just, I mean, Vince, Wake Forest this year gave up 28.3 points per game. Right. Last year they went tw- they gave up 28.9 points per game and won 11 games. Vent last year events. Like think about that. Like this kid was quarterback of a team that gave up that scored 55 points and lost last year at Wake Forest. That's true. You know, uh he w- had won 40, you know, I mean you're talking about a kid that at Wake Forest, you know, won 11 games last year. And did so against the, with a team that gave up 28.9 points per game. They gave up 32.8 in 2020 when he was a, a starter. Again, he only started nine games that year because only played nine games. Wake Forest went four and five that year. They lost a game 53 to 59. They lost another game 42 to 45. He's going to be losing games like that in Notre Dame. Right, exactly. You score 42 points a game in Notre Dame, you're not going to lose to hardly anybody, if right. anybody. You know? So – those are the things that you. It's still weird looking at those COVID years. Like the attendance for the Notre Dame, for the Clemson game was sixty eight. <laughs> <laughs> attendance for the NC State game was a three hundred fifty. You know, it's just really weird That's looking great. at those. Um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, th- those are those are funny numbers. But you know, th- th- that's the thing is like th- th- it makes a lot of sense why this kid's making this run. I mean, you look at Wake Forest this year; they averaged one hundred thirty one rushing yards per game. Notre year. Dame's not averaging 130. Last years. year they averaged a whopping 160 at 3.98 per carry. You know, um, I mean, the year before that, 163, 3.9 yards a carry. All right, and and you know, 2021 they they scored 31 touchdowns. Sam Hartman had 11 of them. I mean, they're they're you know what I mean? Like he's going to have such a better such a better group around him, Vince, and that's the thing um, that that I think is going to be really important for him. And here's, here's another thing. Wake Forest this year ranked 105th in sacks allowed this season. They ranked 92nd the year before. 
They ranked 105th the year before that. They've ranked 92nd or worse every, every year, year that he's been the starting quarterback of Wake Forest, <laughs> or at least the last three years. And so, you know, and and it's it's system. You know, actually, every year because he started nine games in 2018 and they were 96th. So to me, like that's why he came here. I want to play in a pro style 100%. system, not this mesh crap. Because I've had people ask, this is a fair question. Will Notre Dame try to adopt some of the mesh stuff? No. If they did, Sam would be pissed. Like, dude, I left that. I wanted to get away from that. Why are we running this now? You know? Um, but uh yeah, that's, that's those are the reasons sense. that went into why this was an attractive option for right, him. Right, right. Even though there was other schools, right. here's the deal. Other schools offered him a a a spot to come in and start, no questions asked. I know that for a fact. There were other schools that said, hey, you don't have to come come here and compete. But Sam was like, no, I'm looking for something. I want to compete for a championship. And I want to you know, play in a system that's going to allow me to develop as a, as a quarterback. And that's what Notre Dame does.